All right, folks, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the GPD Win, which is GPD's latest device. This is not a successor to the GPD XD, which I had reviewed earlier. Instead, I would say the GPD XD is more of an evolution, mainly because the GPD XD runs the Windows platform. It has an Atom 8700 processor with 4 GB of RAM, 64 GB inbuilt memory. Uh, the basic ports are the USB 3.0, the headphone jack, the SD card slot, the HDMI slot, and a Type-C port. Now this Type-C port is not a Thunderbolt port, unfortunately, but it's for charging. On the back, we have a switch. Now this is very unique to this device. Most uh, UMPCs and laptops do not have a manual switch for fans, but this device it does. You have the off fan, you have the medium speed fan, and the high speed fan. Now the fans, you really can't hear them because they're very soft, but you can feel them a bit when it's on high speed mode. Like there's like a light vibration to it, but it's not that noticeable. The fans do help with cooling the device, and I keep it at a medium speed because I don't play very intensive device, but intensive games, but if you want to play a very intensive game, I recommend you keep it at high speed and it does affect your battery life to a certain extent. Now you'll notice this has vents over here. Now these vents aren't speakers, they aren't speaker holes. These are for the fan, so the air can pass through and there are a few vents here as well. I can't really tell which one is the speaker. There's only one speaker in this, it's mono. And I think GPD did that to, well, have more airflow and have more areas for the you know, device to cool down with, so that's why they only have one speaker. It does not have a very big effect. I mean, it sounds fine. It's loud enough, and you can hear it pretty well because you're going to be holding the, the device pretty close to you anyway. And if you see the shape, uh, the form factor, it's pretty much like a Nintendo 3DS XL, uh, but it's much smaller than a 3DS XL. In fact, it's actually a bit thinner than the original GPD XD. This is the XD, and it's a bit thinner, which is pretty surprising considering how powerful this device is. This is a pretty powerful device because it's on the x86 architecture, not the ARM architecture, which is more, well, power efficiency and all that stuff, but this is more focused on, you know, performance, um, even though it's an atom-based processor. So, um, before I go in, you do have your standard keys over here for game pads. You have the R1 and R2, L1 and L2. Uh, I do not particularly find this setup very uh, comfortable. It's usable, but because the, the button is on the side, it's on the corner, um, I have to use, you know, the middle portion of my finger to actually click it because I have big hands. It's not uh, it's not a big deal, but it is an inconvenience for him. So that is something I'm gonna mark as a flaw in the design. I prefer this design better, uh, but obviously they had to make some sacrifices because by doing this, by making this curve over here, this makes the device a lot more nicer to hold on to. You know, it's very, very comfortable to hold on to. If you see the slight bend over here, it kind of really just flows and fits in your palm. So it's it's a pretty good design choice. However, it's unfortunate that the keys had to end up like this. Well, it's a small flaw, but there you have it. Now going inside, uh, if you remember the XD, it has a similar setup for the gamepad. However, the controls are a bit better, I would say. They're placed a bit better, mainly because... Now, if you look at the GPD XD over here, the thumbsticks are pretty far apart and they're towards the edge, they're towards the corner, so you have to keep your fingers like this and the D-pad is just really small, so it's very difficult for people with big hands or even medium-sized hands. However, with the GPD Win, it's a lot more comfortable because the sticks are more inwards together, similar to what you would have in an Xbox uh, or a PlayStation 3 controller, they're more inwards closer, and your thumb doesn't have to stretch outwards, it has to just be in a natural inward position and it plays right there and it's really, really good. It feels really good, it works well. Um, these keys are good, they're solid. I have no complaints with them. The ABXY, the triangle X square, 
you know, they have markings for both. And I, as I mentioned before, I really appreciate what GPD does with their design. You know, they really think about stuff and they make it accessible to the mainstream audience, which is what we want in a device. Now, the D-pad is good. I wouldn't say it's excellent, but it's good. It feels good. Um, it's responsive. Some people on the Dingo NED forums have reported there's some kind of an input lag, but I personally haven't noticed it, uh, mainly because um, this may be because it's from a newer batch. You know, this came with a firmware that is locked, so it's from a newer batch. The older uh, batches had firmware, which was, um, or the BIOS, was open so you could modify it and you could overclock it but you can't do it on this one because it's an updated bios um the d-pad feels really good to me i have no issue with it um it's much better than the xd d-pad because the xd the d-pad is too small and doesn't move as well it's too mushy this one feels really good um so if you notice over here there is a switch right in the middle um, this switch is a very very unique thing. There's a lot of unique things about this device um, It has three modes. It has your mouse mode when it's in mouse mode What it does it makes this thumbstick into a mouse pointer and you can move the pointer around It's very easy to use and it makes the L and R into clicks left right left click right click and then there's a gamepad mode so if you turn it to here it goes into gamepad mode and you can play all your Xbox 360 controller uh, compatible games very easily. It's just a standard USB controller mode and it works excellent. The last mode is um, direct input. Uh, if you guys don't know what direct input is, it is what games used to use very, very long time ago before X input. So I don't know what you would use it in, but well, hey, it's there. So those are the basics of this device now let's get to the screen the screen is a 5.5 inch ips display it's a beautiful screen uh, i think it's a bit better than the xd because uh it seems like it's sharper and it's a bit bigger and the viewing angles are great i don't have an issue with that color production is really good um i have no issue with it it's crisp you can even change the saturation because it's windows you go to intel graphics so that's all good um now another unique thing is you'll notice over here besides the fact that it has a full qwerty layout over here it has these extra buttons it has l3 r3 start select now the l3 and r3 are split meaning you cannot click these sticks you could if you mod it you know if you're good enough to do that yes you can do that but gpd did not do that which is unfortunate it's usable i played borderlands i did not have much of a issue it's a minor inconvenience at best so it's okay it has a power and the guide button over here now this qwerty keyboard if you want to use this for typing emails and stuff at some point if you're really good at thumb clicking you can but i don't recommend doing it because this is a thumb tap keyboard this is not this kind of a keyboard uh, a thumb tap keyboard is basically what older phones used to use like your blackberries where you punch through your uh, fingertip or nails you know you just punch in because these are hard keys they had to make it like that and it's usable you know it's um, it's not something that's a big hindrance it's very usable I use it to browse the web and I can send some messages on messenger but I am not going to be writing a book report on this this is really not for that <laughs> at all but otherwise good job here good job with the keys bad job GPD with the L3 RSV come on guys you can do better than this and um, not so good with the, you know, I mean, okay, I understand this button layout, but it's okay. Um, so I am going to focus on PC games on this video. Uh, but before I get into that, there are so many videos about this device on YouTube, which show GameCube emulation, PlayStation 2 emulation, uh, although PlayStation 2 emulation, not full speed, GameCube emulation is pretty good. You can actually play a lot of games pretty well which is amazing for a device that's this small. On the market, you would not find a device that's this small that can do GameCube emulation, which already has a built-in keyboard and gamepad. It's pretty amazing. Uh, so it can do that. 
Now, I'm not going to focus on that because this video is about PC gaming. Uh, I have done videos about Android gaming and you can see all the emulation stuff. You know, all the small emulators or older gen stuff, you can run it in this. It's a Windows environment. If you can run it on your, you know, tablet PC, you can probably run it on this. Um, it has uh, the 8700, as I mentioned, which runs at 1.6 base clock and it goes up to 2.3 gigahertz. Although I personally turned off Turbo because I don't need 2.3 gigahertz. Pretty much all the games I run from the Xbox 360 generation run fine at 1.6 gigahertz base speed and it gives me good battery life, less heat. Heat is not a major issue. The heat dissipation on this device works pretty well, even though my hands are sensitive to heat. So anything above like 43 degrees Celsius, I don't feel comfortable. Uh, even though the device can get pretty warm and toasty also at times, most of the heat is in this area over here. So it's not, there's not much heat going on here because the fan is over here. And also when you hold this device, most of the weight is rested in this portion. So if you can see, you're holding it this way. And the reason why you're holding it this way is because the keys are placed over here, the L2 and R2. So you're holding it this way and there's no heat on this edge. There's no heat on this edge. So the heat is focused mainly in this back area. So it does not create much of an issue and uh, it can be a minor inconvenience at times. Again, there's a bunch of minor inconveniences. That's all, not, nothing major. Um, just to give you an idea, I played Oblivion, Elder Scrolls Oblivion, which is a 360 generation game, and it was fairly intensive for when it came out, and I played that game for four and a half hours on medium speed at base clock 1.6 gigahertz, no lag, it was amazing, and I'm still doing it, I'm actually getting back into Oblivion, I like Skyrim too, um, so that's, you know, you can get, uh, as I mentioned, up to four and a half hours at base clock. Now, if you keep it at normal mode with turbo on, you will get two hours and 20 minutes playing Oblivion. But I think it's pretty useless because you're getting the same speed. You're getting the same, you know, experience. So you might as well lower the clock. On some games, which are very intensive, yes, you should use turbo. Uh, if you guys don't understand this technical jargon I'm talking about, well... <sighs> You should visit Reddit. <laughs> You'll probably find out what I'm talking about. It's basically about changing clocks. Um, for a mainstream user, you don't have to worry about all this. You know, this is just for hardcore stuff. This is an enthusiast channel and I talk about enthusiast stuff, but if you're just a mainstream user, you shouldn't have an issue. You know, you can do pretty well. I am going to be showing off a couple of games on this device, which are gonna be running from this device uh, internally. Um, there are some things that I'm not going to be showing in this video because they're too basic and you can see tons of videos I'm not going to waste my time on that. This can do PS4 remote play. You can stream your PS4 games This can do game stream. It can uh, uh, Sorry, this can do steam in-home streaming from your PC, which is a great thing. So let's get into gaming So as you can see gameplay is pretty smooth the only thing I have tweaked in this is are the shadows it's running at 720p and it runs very very smooth uh, let's try to do something cool if I can find which key does the cool stuff yeah. there we go all right and we turn into a beast I haven't experienced much lag at all in this. Yeah, if there's too much going on in the, uh, the screen at times, it can maybe stutter a bit, but for the most part, it runs very smooth. So, there we go, we have it running Skyrim. So let's exit this out. So in this game, I've just modified the resolution. So it's like a little bit low. It, I think it's around 5, 4, 544 by 944. You can probably run this as 1024 or 600p and it runs fine. But as you can see performance wise, so you can see the motion is pretty fluid. There's no lag. Granted, this is an older game. This is not the definitive version. Uh, the reason for that is the definitive version has some tweaks which may make the game stutter but this does not have those tweaks so there you go let's go into the street 
and it runs quite good. I mean, I can definitely play this game. It's not running at 60 FPS, but it runs at a playable speed. So if you want to play this game in the airport or, you know, you're on your way to work in your car, it's very playable. There's not lag, there's not enough lag to make it unplayable. Okay, so that's Sleeping Dog, and I'm gonna Sleeping Dogs, and I'm gonna exit it. And this is Transformers Devastation running. So as you can see, it runs very well. I'm not sure about this level. And the screen is gorgeous. It's a really nice screen. The great thing about Windows is that you can change the saturation of the screen by going into your Intel graphics. So I'm just going to show a little bit of movement so you can see. The keys are very responsive. So now that you've seen some of the gameplay videos, you can tell that this is a very capable device. It plays Skyrim pretty well. You know, it plays um, Transformers Devastation, which is a relatively newer game. And some games that I haven't shown, which are very much more graphically intensive, it plays them well. It plays Borderlands 2 very well. You know, you get 25 to 30 FPS depending on what you're doing. So I consider these games enjoyable. They are not going to give you the high-end PC performance, but that's not what this device is about. This device is about giving you a mobile experience um, at reasonable frame rates. And what's really surprising is that how far, how far we have come, you know, from with Intel HD graphics. People used to say, no, those are crap, you can't play anything. But you can do a lot of stuff with Intel HD graphics nowadays. You know, a lot of older generation games, you can play them very well. Project Snowblind, The Suffering, um, I have Space Marine on there, Kingdoms of Amalur. These are amazing games that you cannot experience on an Android device. Now going to the Android device, is this going to rep replace my GPD XD? Well, yes, the GPD XD for me is, well, crap now because I have no reason to have this except that it may give you better battery life in some circumstances. There's no reason for me to have that. I don't play many Android games nowadays. Uh, for that, I might come back to the XD, but otherwise, for emulation, you know, GameCube emulation or Dreamcast emulation or, you know, um, Sega Saturn for um, PS1 games and all. I can do all of that in this. But the plus side on this Windows device is I can play games like games like Wolfenstein. I can play games like Quake and um, Gears of War, the older versions of these games on the 360 that came out. Um, so it's a very, very capable device. And it is something that if you are an enthusiast or if you are somebody who wants to work in a Windows environment when it comes to gaming or certain basic applications, you should get this device. It's for you. There is uh, not much reason I can see that you wouldn't want to get this device because it's a very capable machine for the price. Um, the only bad part is the warranty and the shipping to China. Now, keep in mind that this is a newer batch that I got my unit from. Um, it's not the older batch with which people had problems, graphic issues, and you know, screen issues, control issues. I do not have any of those issues, so I'm okay with it. Um, but if you are one of those people who gets these kind of problems, it's a big hassle because you have to ship this unit back to China and then you have to get it back and it's gonna take you a couple of months. You know, at some point you're better off buying a newer unit. So that is something you have to be wary of. But if if you're okay with a first generation device, you wanna um, you know get a first generation device, then you should, in most cases, have a good experience. You know, I have so far never had a bad experience with GPD. Uh, their devices have been pretty good. The only devices I device I did not like was the Q8. Um, some people like that device. So yeah, it's a pretty good, neat little, you know, portable gaming machine which runs Windows. There's nothing like this out there. The closest you could come to is like um, a Pandora, which. Um, I'm not going to comment on that, your videos about that. There, otherwise, there's nothing like this. The battery life is really good for gaming. You can get up to four and a half hours, or you can get uh, two hours, two and a half hours of intensive gaming, or you can get, you know, maybe seven hours or six hours 
uh, of basic use. I have not used this for basic stuff, but I'm pretty sure you should get a very long battery life given the systems this has, um, given the capabilities of the processor where you can downclock, underclock, overvolt, undervolt. You know, you can do many things with it. So this is the GPD win, and if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you dislike it, go ahead and dislike it. But as always, thank you for watching.